go. Welcome everybody to Fedora 39 release party and this session here. And we're gonna give you an update on all the Fedora desktops that are using RPM3 uh, in Fedora. So we're here for Server Blue, Kinoite, Cerisera, and Onyx. And with us today, we have a special guest, Zoshua, uh, that is with us. And that is going to talk about us, Fedora Onyx. All right, so let's dive in right away with what's new. If I click on the slide, that's better. And the stage is yours. Yeah, well, th thanks for inviting me on to talk about Onyx. Um, I, I'm glad that uh, we're having a shared session here because the principle of Fedora Onyx is quite simple in that you take Budgie and you add all the awesomeness that is Fedora Atomic Desktops to it and you merge it. And if you love Budgie, this is a perfect experience for you. So yeah, it uses the Budgie desktop with a nearly stock experience. So basically, the only changes are like pinned applications for the default apps. Um, and it's a follow-up to Fedora Budgie Spin, which was introduced in Fedora 38. And of course, similar to other Fedora Atomic desktops, we ship with uh, Toolbox and we have access to, to Flatpaks. Uh, so that's, that's basically it. Um, hopefully, we'll be rebranding from Onyx at least in terms of the public facing name to Fedora Budgie Atomic. It will get into that in a moment. Um, and then that there's sort of a big brain idea and aspirational to eventually have this atomic desktop variant actually be the f flagship Fedora Budgie spin and actually have the immutable version be rebranded. So this, I, I don't have a time frame for this. You know, I, I think there's obviously some discussions that have to be had in terms of usability for everybody and uh, from from end users to developers, the, the entire spectrum. Uh, but I'm quite confident in the resiliency and viability of it. So it, I would be very excited to have it be the, the flagship experience. But I will hand it off to Timothy to actually talk about this whole, what, what, what is this Fedora Atomics desktop thing that I just mentioned? What? Yes, exactly. Thank you, Joshua. And so the idea with here is that we're trying to regroup all of those variants that we have in Fedora. And so we're creating a new SIG, a new special interest group, which is called the Fedora Atomic Desktops. And uh, we'll have it focused on all of those. So instead of having us uh, be split into subgroups, uh, Silver Blue, Kinoite, Circe, Nix, we're trying to regroup everybody under the Atomic branding. So you might know the atomic branding from the, the ways the project atomic days a little bit about a few years in the past now and so here we're we're trying to like reuse this brand uh, but just for the federal atomic desktops and this is what we're trying to do that here so we now we have a sig we have a change uh, proposal for federal 40 uh, that is going to be uh, submitted to the federal console so this is right now still uh, in flux, hopefully it will get approved, uh, but uh, we're, not, we're not fully there yet. Uh, and the logo is very like, this is all uh, Fedora Atomic, uh, the all project Atomic logo, it's likely to be something else. So don't, don't get too attached to logo yet. Yeah, ho hopefully once this is approved and a decision has been made, we'll, we'll get somebody from Fedora Design to, to make a lovely new logo that, that really reflects the current atomic desktop. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, along all of that centralization, we're trying to have us uh, hang out in, uh, have the C gang out in GitLab, in a GitLab namespace. Uh, right now it's named OS3, but maybe we could rename that to Atomic. That's, uh, that's a possibility. And yeah, we're trying to centralize stuff here so that we share as much as possible between all of those variants. All right, so that's kind of the big news. Uh, now let's see what we have uh, for all of the spins that we have, that was been, all of the variants that we've been talking about here. So first, let's go with Silver Blue. Uh, with Silver Blue comes everything that goes with uh, all the changes that come in Fedora Workstation. Uh, so we have the latest GNOME release. Um, we have a new viewer for images. So Loop, uh, the new Loop application replaces IO GNOME. 
Uh, so if you have flat packs on Silverblue, obviously you use flat packs. The Ergonom flat pack won't be replaced automatically uh, yet by the loop one. So you will have to do it manually, remove the uh, Ergonom one and install the, the, the loop one to get, to get it. But it's just in the repo. We also now have flat packs to uh, on the PowerPC architecture, thanks to the very good work of the flat pack SIG. And they are included in the installer if you want to install that directly on, on, those, on this architecture. Um, and that's not all of the changes. Uh, a lot of the changes here are very shared or very similar to what Fedora Workstation uh, has been doing, which is kind of like the ID of Silverblue. And so if you go and see the Fedora Workstation, uh, what's new page uh, on, the, on the Fedora magazine, you will get the, the, full, the full picture. Alrighty, then what's new in Kinoite? Uh, well, not so much uh, because in a way um, we're still uh, waiting. We're still waiting for the next version of Plasma 6, which is going to be released in February and mid end of February. I don't remember the exact dates. So we're still on the latest version of Plasma 5, which is 5.27 and chugging it up. Uh, what's uh, what's definitely you is the, that now we have a good set of KDE applications that are available as flat packs uh, in Fedora. So they are built in Fedora infrastructure from the same RPM sources that you know and love, uh, and the same build options. And so you get the same thing, but as a flat pack from Fedora. Um, Due to the advantage of flat packs, those flat packs are also available immediately for all federal release. It's not just for the latest one, you get it for all the release. So for this, we have to go and, and give a big shout out and big thanks to Yakov and the flat pack seat that made this happen because it's a lot of work and they're working really hard on this. So with the flat packs now being there, uh, we've decided to remove some application from the base image. So you will no longer have them. So we removed Ocular, Grandview, and KCalc, and you can now get them as uh, flat packs. So either from Fedora or if you prefer from FlatHub, it's kind of the same. Um, the one trick here is that the migration won't happen directly, so you will have kind of have to do it manually uh, and your settings won't be migrated as well, unfortunately. So if you have a lot of settings in those apps, then well, you'll have to either copy them or reset them. Okay, then let's take a look at Sercera. And Sercera, well, there hasn't been much happening in Sercera for this release, which is fine. Sometimes software doesn't have to change all the time. And uh, so, I ask them and say, hey, we did some stuff, but it's in the background, so nobody should notice. So I guess it's cool as well if nobody notices any any changes or any problems. So that's it for Series R. And yeah, and the last one is Onyx, and we just talked about it. All right, the last piece of change, let let's, let this uh, let last bit of change for Fedora 39 is RPM Mystery Unified Call. So this one as well, you won't notice at all because it should be completely transparent to users. And it's just something for us on the server side. And it's kind of something that helps us prepare for the next thing that are coming up. So what is this exactly is that we now, we've now started to build all of those images, these versions of Fedora using a special mode using our image three we call that we call unified core. I won't go into like all the technical details because it's very, uh, it's a bit long to explain. Uh, but the main idea is that it's a stricter build mode for those images. And so it helps us catch up issues in RPMs, make sure that the image are like better foolproof, uh, they, they don't have issues and things like that. And so it's, it's really useful for us. Inside we build Fedora Chorus, it's how we build a lot of other things. Um, the main bit that is interesting is that this is right now, this is a prerequisite for boot up this support, which we'll go into uh, right away in the, in, the, in the few slides. And also, it's a, also a step towards the OS3 container image, which is also something we'll go over in the next few slides. All righty. And that's it for the changes for Fedora 39. So now we have some time still. Uh, so let's look at what's coming up next. We have ambitions for the future of the atomic desktops. Now we can call them 
this way. Uh, and uh, we're looking at what we're going to do in, in the next few years. You might recall that there has been a FEDRA strategy initiative that is looking at, hey, let's try and make those FEDRA atomic desktops uh, be a really good uh, or even potentially the default option in FEDRA. And so we're looking at things that will help us make that happen. So one of the things here is bootable support. So the main thing right now is that if you're running on of those uh, variants, if there are variants, well, your bootloader isn't really getting any updates. So you can do that manually, but it's a little bit painful. So we've had it support for, we're working on added support for bootable. Bootable right now, it's available in Fedora Core S, for example, the server version, but it's not in the atomic desktops. So we're working on adding that. Uh, it will let you finally up, let you update your bootloader in a much more easier fashion. So a prerequisite for that work was RPMS3 Unified Core, and we did that for Fedora 39. So now this is out of the way, and we can focus on fixing uh, the Anaconda starter to support that. And hopefully, this lands in Fedora 40, and we are good with that. Next is one of the biggest items is what we call OS3 native containers. So we're working on moving the uh, ecosystem from OS3 as OS3 repos, OS3 commits, into having them be packaged as OCI containers. So OCI containers, you may know them under the name of Docker containers or simply containers. And uh, the idea is that it's going to make a managing all of those uh, all of the versions, the systems, much, much easier for you users and for developers, for administrators. So that's like one of the big benefits, easier to manage, easier to deploy, easier to mirror as well. Mirroring an Opera S3 repo, an OS3 repo right now, it's it's pretty doable, but it's still uh, something special. Uh, mirroring a container image is something that a lot of people know already to do, how to do. So the big plus uh, and Podman, yeah, they're not not just Docker. Podman works as well. Um, the big plus uh, is that you can do with OS3 native containers, you can do derived images. So when you want to have changes, when you have changes to the image, you can uh, use container file, Docker file to do those changes and and push a new images and 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 use that for your desktop. As it's just the container images, you can also inspect the content just like any other container images. It's run a scanner on top of it if you want to scan for vulnerabilities or something like that, or just run it. Why not? You, it's a container. You can just run it and see things inside of it. Uh, another nice thing is that you can do all of the cool stuff using Cosign and Seek Store to actually sign those images uh, with keys that are stored in Ledger and all those things, uh, which uh, will make it much easier for people to actually set up all of this and finally get rid of GNU GPG. And yeah, so here are at the end at the bottom, I've written, I pasted two examples of all of this work. So the first one is like a little bit oriented around Fedora Core S, but it's the same technology, it's the same ID, and you can see a lot of examples here. And the second one here below, I've just made, it's fresh out of the, the printing of the printer. And it's a how small example that maybe we can get to if I have enough time at the end around how to build a custom image. All right, so where are we with this work? Well, the idea is uh, we're trying to land that for Fedora 40 as well. Uh, we have work in progress in Punji to get those images being built uh, by the Compose in Fedora and from. Uh, initially, they will be like different images, but like they will be the same content as the, uh, the OS3 ones, the classic OS3 ones, but they will be built differently in parallel. Uh, and so, yeah, so we'll have duplication and hopefully at some at some point we'll transition everybody to the container images and leave the OS3 repo uh, as a legacy. So I have a link here to the change page where you can take a look at the, there's like a lot of things. This is the change page. It covers a lot of grounds, a lot of different things. Um, like don't take it all in. Like we'll try to be uh, updating this page and probably rewrite it to focus on, on some points. Uh, it's kind of generic, but uh, yeah, that's, it's, it's kind of the ideas here. 
All right. And now here, I want to give a big shout out to the three projects. Uh, well, to it's three but one project uh, that are outside kind of like uh, the federal committee, but that are just like, well, not outside is not the right word. It's more like alongside the federal community. And they are building incredible incredible things. They are using our images. So yeah, they're using Fedora as a base to do all of this stuff. And it's it's awesome. So they're using this very container native format that I've just presented to derive their own images and had tons of changes on top of it. Tons of fixes, tons of stuff that sometimes Fedora should do. Let's be honest, like some things we should we should just do, but like for time reasons or whatever we haven't done yet. And there are some things that, well, we can't really do for legal reasons and they can't do. So it's so it's awesome that they can do it and make it easier for users. Like, yeah. So for, for example, like uh, if you have a brand spanking new framework and you want an image that you know is going to work right out of the box, they actually have a framework image that you could go and grab. It's all the same lovely goodness that you you know and love from Fedora, just catered towards towards the framework configurations. Exactly. And it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so the yeah, they have like three main burns here. Uh, they, uh, the first one is like kind of the umbrella project, the universal blue projects, where they have a lot of images, a lot of options, uh, which is kind of a generic one. Um, then they made what they call the project blue film, which is a GNOME silver blue based uh, image uh, focused on super developer use case with cool stuff, uh, really interesting uh, opinions, uh, ideas. And uh, finally, there's Bazite, which is kind of like SteamOS, but made from Fedora uh, with uh, with additions on top and fixes on top, uh, like stuff that's not in SteamOS that they fixed in Bazite, and which is really cool. So do check them out uh, if you want. Uh, all right. And I see a question I'm going to answer right away. Those matches are so. They're the base images that we build here in Fedora, we build them via our image tree. And what they do is that they make those images via derived images. So they make this via container builds, just like you would do a container build for an application, and they do it, uh, they do it in, in GitHub. All righty. And the last item, the one last thing, uh, is support for Azure Linux. So we don't have support right now for Azure Linux, but we would really like to have that, uh, and we kind of need help. Uh, so this is kind of like uh, a call for help to make this happen. Um, one of those items is like having our permission support in Kiwi uh, that is kind of needed because right now Fedora has a remix uh, images are built using Kiwi. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's not that much work, uh, but yeah, if you're interested in working on that, feel free to reach out to us and we'll we'll try and make that happen. All right, so I just say we got good mental stuff. If you want to help us to make that happen and uh, help us move us forward, if, help us move uh, those variants as the default options for Fedora, then yeah, we need folks to help us here. Uh, so. You can reach us on several places. We are mostly hanging out in the metric channels. Uh, so if you want to talk about things that are like kind of meta, which impacts everybody, you can go into the Atomic Desktops metric channel. Otherwise, we have channels for all the desktops. So if you are having a specific issue uh, related to GNOME, then go ahead and jump into, jump into the Silver Blue one because there's likely more people that will be able to help you there, uh, for example, and etc. And yeah. Um, and that's it for me. Thanks for listening. And um, and I can do a demo. We have five minutes, I guess. That's fine. Or we can ask questions. We can answer questions as well. Yeah, there's there's a, a couple questions actually. There there's one from Joseph, uh, and he says, "I I heard a talk about removing Firefox from Atomic Spins in the future, so that it's not stuck as part of the immutable image." Any comments or correction on that idea? <laughs> yeah, that's still planned, but uh, it, it needs help from from folks to happen because it's a lot of work. And so, uh, yeah, it's in the car in the 
in the how do we say in, in the box uh, but uh, we need help to make it happen and the next question comes from uh, I, I got you might have heard of this guy uh, Matthew Matthew Miller um, <laughs> he says how does six store integration work here and why get rid of GPG signing I mean, GPG is a failure, uh, is a general failure for encrypted communications, but we've got the signing and verification infrastructure in place. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good point. So uh, it's likely that we won't get rid of GPG signing for photo imaging images soon. But the main advantage is that cosine six tool make it much easier for you to set up the signing for your custom images. And uh, this is kind of the goal here. So maybe we start signing using both in Fedora or we switch to Sixo. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We're, we're not like the, the main difference here is that we're not bound to GPG because we don't have to use the RPM format and all those things. So we can use different tech that is using uh, better things. And uh, no, Dom right. says, says uh, sorry if I missed you talking about it, but any plans for a system deboot support in the future? And this is also in the box. Uh, I'm waiting for help uh, for, for us to work on uh, system deboot support in OS3, uh, especially. And so, yeah, we would really love to have that support. Um, but yeah, again, we need help to make this happen. All right, so we don't have any more questions and we have got like two minutes. Uh, so I'll give you a quick look about how does building a derived container image uh, for your desktop looks like. So I've just made that and just test it out. And this is kind of like um, the idea of what you need. So this looks like, this is like the custom set of packages that I, ha I have on my system. So uh, right now, I have those packages overlaid uh, because I need them, especially like libvirt. You cannot really, it's super hard to run libvirt in, in different ways or in a container. I haven't been really successful with that yet. So right now, I have libvirt uh, directly installed in my system and uh, another bunch of, of tools. And so using the container file format, uh, the OS3 native container format, uh, you can go ahead and write a container file and say, hey, okay, I'm going to pick up uh, a base image. So here I'm, I'm starting from Kinoite. This, this just label for query to say that, hey, don't keep images forever. And then I'm going to install a few packages. So here are list of packages that I want to install in my system. Let's say I enable the libboot uh, daemon. I just remove some files that shouldn't be there. This is an RPM packaging bug. We'll fix that later. And then finally, I commit the stuff. And if I go ahead and on GitHub, use a GitHub action and build that using stored up build container tools. So here I'm using builder. And uh, I'm building this image and pushing it to Quay. And I just did that earlier. And here I got an image here that is being pushed. So it's, it's a little big, but it's OK. And if I take a Fedora Kinoite system here that I have. And so I've just installed this fresh system here. It was uh, on Fedora 39. And I've used the rebase command it is over there to rebase to this image. I've rebooted. So right now I'm running on this image here. And if I go and look at, for example, do we have libvirt install? Oh yeah, if I grip, that's better. 
And here we go. We've got Levert installed on my system and zero package layered, which is like the main thing. Like this GitHub action will like churn out images every day and with updates from the Fedora packages, from the Fedora repos. And then I can just RPI registry update and I get all the benefits of using image-based system. And at the same time, I don't lose time layering packages. I don't have issues with packages uh, layered. Uh, when I do the update, it's always working, essentially. The updates happen on the GitHub action side. The, the failures happen on the GitHub action side. They don't happen on my system. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, why why wouldn't you? Because, like, I'm sure some people that aren't used to immutable variants would just run, you know, sudo dnf install in a package. You know, why wouldn't they just do that with RPM OS tree? But you kind of touched on that by the fact that it will cause transactions to take longer because you're layering so much on top of that base image. Yeah, that's the main benefit here is that essentially you're downloading the thing prepared. You're downloading, downloading the things like directly prepared, directly installed. And so you don't have to wait for your system to reinstall packages as overlay every time you update, essentially. The updates are so much faster with this method, which is really, really practical, really great. And what's also a, a nice side effect of this, if you are lucky to have multiple systems and you all want them to be shared and have the same configuration, is you could just point your fresh system to your OS tree and have everything that you have installed on one system already installed on the other. Yeah. Exactly. All right, and I guess that's it. We're about out of time. Thanks a lot, Joshua, for joining us today. And uh, thanks, everybody, for, for joining.